we're going to take a look at some cameras today. These are all Sony DSCF 717. They have a very large lens that can tilt relative to the body of the camera. Very unusual design. Apparently there are lasers. The USB connectors on the lens, which is strange. There's an ACC port. Accessories, whatever that means. Uh, some sort of hot shoe. Controls for focus zoom. And some other things. Then there's a port cover here. Which has got AV and a charger, but I don't have a charger that fits that. Yeah, so there's a this type of viewfinder and there's an LCD and you can choose what one you use with the switch. There are direction controls which you can also click in the center. There's a mode dial, night framing and night shot and a green thing in the center. Then there's also a wheel and that can push as well. So plenty of good controls. Unfortunately it takes memory sticks which is a bit annoying because who has those? Um, I do have a couple. It's a a a memory stick pro duo with magic gate. So that's quite exciting. And then that can go in this adapter and then that turns it into a memory stick. And then there's also some batteries which I don't have a charger for. But I have charged up some batteries with a power supply. So these cameras suffered from failures of the sensor, the CCD. And Sony was replacing them for you for free. Okay. So this one has so that memory stick's no good, I guess. Anyway, the image sensor in this one does not work. You can't there's no response to light of any sort. So let's try the others. I don't know why that memory stick doesn't work. I don't know. Anyway, this one has a that. <laughs> it has a 128 megabyte actual memory stick. So that's interesting. Let's try that out. So the power is this lever here. Okay, you gotta set the date. I don't care about that. Okay, so that also has a memory stick error, but you can actually get some kind of response out of this one. It looks pretty distorted and weird though. But um, it's, the menu looks weird as well, so maybe that's an LCD screen. You can see it's sort of peeling off to the sides there. So maybe this has a LCD problem? I wonder if we can take the LCD off this one and stick it on here and that might get a working camera. So according to that it's a 5 megapixel camera. So the final one, this one has a shoulder strap to get in the way. That's got a an exciting looking one, 256 megabytes, so that's pretty awesome. Let's see what this does. The screen looks a bit better on that. Record folder is something. Okay. So that might actually work. The picture on there seems good. Oh, let's use the flash. So there's a pop up flash on the top which will pop up when you half press the shutter release. But that seems to work. So we put it to... Oh, I think the, yeah, the battery is wrecked. Oh, it's flashing some error code. Yeah, maybe the flash capacitor wasn't able to charge up. Perhaps. Anyway, there's our photo that we took. And there's some other photos that were on the card from somebody else, whoever owned this before I got it. So that's interesting. Yeah. Very good. Okay, well this one seems to work the most out of all those. 
now that we've charged the flash capacitors up, let's take the cameras apart. So that one seemed to have a bad LCD. Put that aside. This one, I think, has a bad CCD. So let's take that apart first uh, without really caring whether we can get it back together or not. Because, yeah, the CCD is quite deep in there. I might, I've owned this one for more than 10 years, these other two I've only just got hold of and I might have taken this apart a long time ago but I can't remember exactly maybe not taken it apart that far because it's all back together nicely let's just undo all the screws we can find and see what happens the tripod mount is on the lens because that's the biggest and heaviest part of the camera that always gets in the way when you're trying to shut this door. Yeah, that's a bit annoying. There's something that looks like a little door there. Not sure what that is. Maybe, oh look, it's all coming apart now. I guess we should try picking that open. It appears to have some sort of ribbon cable connector under there. Okay, so there's a connector there pops off and then there's a connector to the side for the power or charging port so perhaps we can swap this whole part with the other one that had the bad looking LCD we we'll just check we've got the right one here yeah, it's got a real crusty look to it you can see on the yellow there it's kind of ghosting so Let's take the back off this one and see if we can replace this, the backs, and get this one working better. Not that I actually plan to use this camera because it's a bit out of date now. Much better choices around for cameras. You have to have that out. Unplug that cable that we can't use anyway because I don't have the charger, so that's presumably a bad screen. Looks like the flash capacitor is there, so we'll have to be careful when we take apart the other one to make sure. That's not posing a danger. So that's the viewfinder assembly. There must be some sort of LCD screen in there. We'll take apart the other one and have a look. Oh, that memory stick was bad anyway. But, um, let's see. No, it still looks bad. Just as bad. There's this kind of ghosting thing on it. What if we put it on viewfinder instead? Similar. Well, almost focused. Anyway, so that might not have fixed the problem. So maybe there's something else up with it. Still weird ghosting. See like this red red mark there? Yeah. Maybe it's something else that's upsetting it then. Not just the screen. Okay then let's continue with this. Let's have a look at the eye you find a thing. Oh, there's screws with arrows next to them that you're supposed to be taking off. Uh, okay, well I already took off a bunch of other screws. And so I knew a person who had one of these cameras for real as their camera back when this was a current model. That must have been around 2002 or so. And I remember when they were using it, you could see this laser light shine out of it when the focus happened so maybe that comes out of there maybe we'll have to check that out some kind of laser focusing system that was good for people's eyes when you're taking photos of people oh okay so the sewer part is separate to this black or dark for a grey part. And it looks like you have to rip off this eye holder thing. Otherwise it won't fit. It's so gross though. Making my fingers all sticky from its gross deteriorating this. Yeah, I don't think that comes out either. And it's folded ribbon cable there. The direction pad on it. Oh, that's a neat little thing, isn't it? 
Let me just shove that through there. And then that bit hooks over the edge of that, so then that comes out once it's de-hooked from there. But that also went around to there. Oh, there's a screw under the circuit board, so I guess it's supposed to take the circuit board off first. Okay. Now there's some ribbon cables going to the LCD. Yeah, that one there's the backlight. Separate to the other. And then there's stuff going to the viewfinder, which is quite a large ribbon there. But then there's another one that goes to Oh, it's that AV out thing, and there's a little battery there. Oh, so that's a backlight assembly, and there's an LCD assembly, so they're different, different things. The Casio Made in Japan LCD panel, and then separate to that is this thing, which, I don't know if that's, yeah, it'll be LED, three LED strings. Let's pull it apart now because that was stuck onto it. Bring if it's possible to undo this to look at the LEDs. Looks like we're not putting this back together at this point. Oh yeah, there are the LEDs. They're stuck under all this stuff. It's got double-sided tapes. And... Okay, so that's the diffusing material. So there's the LEDs. Five LEDs? Must be in some sort of arrangement of some in series and some not in series. There's a little strip on the back so you can't see the tracks. There's a resistor. Yeah, that's the backlight for the LCD. And then a memory backup battery with a little bit of this flexible board stuck on top of it. Oh, so that's quite quite a bit of stuff to manufacture that flex then. You lose quite a bit of material in there to manufacture it, or depending on how they panelize that up. Interesting. There's a connector on the other side. Various LCD driver thingies. And there's the weird Sony Sony power connector. Never seen what the power supply for that actually looks like. Possible that that was optional and that the camera came with a standalone charger for the batteries. None of the cameras I've got come with any of that stuff. Let's continue with this thing. I think it's ready to come apart. I don't think that matters. Ah, okay. So there's ribbons there, which I think that's... That there is the stuff that goes through the hinge. Looks like there's two plus some sort of cable. Ah, yeah, there will be high voltage wires going up to the flash from the capacitor there. That's interesting. But it makes sense. And you see we've pulled out a ribbon cable on each side. So there is a high voltage connector there. So it's under this... Under there. So I'm not sure if we can pull that up without removing this board first. can, not very easily, and yeah, so that's just the type of connector that you'd normally see on LCD backlights, and that will be some of that silicone, several KV rated wire tape covering the connectors there, the discrete wired connector there rather than a flex. Then there's a bunch more ribbons on this side. This blue one, which goes up to the control area, power supply stuff there, some other processory controller chippy things. Maybe that's some sort of CPU, it's got a crystal there. And that must be a power supply controller, I think, with all that business going on there. Oh, there's two capacitors there. And then there's some warnings about replacing the fuses with the correct values. It looks like there's five different fuses in some places. I'm not sure exactly where they are because they'll be tiny little things that just look like other surface mount components. It reckons there's three in a row and then there's one by itself. I don't know exactly where that's looking or even what board we're looking on. 
Mm, there's another little crystal there, a really tiny one. And they give you the part number of the fuse even, 1.4 amp rating. Ah, oh, I think that's the memory stick slot, isn't it? That's what that cable is for. Yeah, okay, so that's the memory stick holder detent mechanism in it. Oh, that's a connector. That's cunning. So there's a ribbon cable connector built into the the actual socket. And that's it's very shielded. There's only a few wires. I don't know what kind of interface memory sticks have. So I want to access these capacitors and measure them before we touch any further. Otherwise we could get in trouble. Probably the best place to measure it will be on that connector that we pulled out. You can have a bad day if you touch the flash capacitor when it's charged up. So let's see what we got here. We've got, oh no, look, there we go, 160 volts, so that will make quite a loud noise. Should we short it out and listen to the noise? What kind of implement can we use to short it? Screwdriver. There you go. Quite a loud bang. That's what happens in the flash tube normally. That was only at 160 volts, so imagine how much louder that is when it's at the full 300-ish. Yeah, those are 310 volt capacitors. And they'll be in parallel. And they'll probably be charged to very close to 310 volts is common with flash capacitors. See the voltage is recovering a little bit, but it's way below what's going to cause us harm now, so that's good. Have to remember to discharge flash capacitors. That's extremely important before you touch things. And even after doing it lots of times, I still jump because <laughs> there's such a loud noise that makes. Probably wasn't picked up very well, but yeah, it's a loud bang. So that's the battery terminal. It's got little fork thingies that go into holes on the bottom of the battery. I could actually use this to help me charge the batteries because I've been just balancing things in these holes, which doesn't work very well because they're not they're not very deep holes. So it could make an actual charger that, but these batteries seem quite dead. So there's also a reset button there. Which must push something on one of those boards we took out. It must be this. There's a little button there. I also noticed there was an LED there and I saw it blink, blink briefly when putting in the battery. I think that must be for memory stick access. Accessing. Okay, let's take a look at these controls. This is a cast magnesium material. Not just cheap plastic. Mm, the shutter button. Ah, and then this molding thing peels off. Ah, oh, there's microphone and speaker in that as well. The shutter button there. Just two levels of clicking, presumably. Okay, I think we have to release this. The plastic bits held in by some clips. Okay. Ah, so the mode control is just this wheel, but all the detending stuff is done in this separate part and in that the power switch all that stuff just pushes on that little button thing there and then that was the selector switch or something microphone or speaker there okay so that was a microphone and that's a speaker Oh, so that's that three position switch goes to that. Yeah, mode control is interesting. And you have to take all of this apart to get any of it apart. Yeah, so it's all falling apart. So there's some ball bearings there. And these bumps. And springs that were pushing the balls upwards into those dents. Balls are falling off, everything's falling off. See there, detenting. Oh, that slide switch there, little plastic nubs which ride over each other. Ah, the power switch, that one there, 
that is attached through the middle with little stakes which have been folded over. I wonder if that's actually soldered down to the flex or if that just pushes onto it. It might just push on to some sliding contact. Yeah. See the spring and the white bit there. That will have some kind of contact underneath it. And it's just a carbon trace. Yeah, there's the contacts. Yeah, so that's sufficiently destroyed. So it'll be the same thing with this mode switch. That's got heat stakes. It's been squished over to hold it down. So if we snap those off, then we can see it will be similar sort of contact pads and strips that ride around on it. There's the contacts, and there's the strips that they ride on. Let's dig into the lens part. How much stuff is in here, or if all the processing was done on the other board? Is this just a camera pickup and lens assembly with some extra buttons? Oh no, look at that, there's lots of extra processing stuff down here. So that's the USB connector, Mini B, from back in the day when that was a thing. A bit easier to use than the Micro B one. As you can more easily tell which way up this one goes. And then a little bracket, and then that holds a flex, which has a rigid section where the connector is soldered down. And there's some sort of part there, I think that's a common mode choke. And there's also some other decoupling type thingies. Let's see how to get the rest of this apart. The interesting hinge mechanism there. Let's have a roll of flex in there. Not sure about the high voltage cable though, that might just go straight through. Since that's a nice flexible type. As long as it doesn't get pinched anywhere it'll be fine. Let's take things apart. So there's some sort of plastic cover thing there that clips on. Oh yes, look at that. There's a spiral of ribbon cable in there. Quite a lot. So it puts it under quite low stress then when it's turning. And I think we need to get that spring off, otherwise it's going to cause us some bother. Uh, so that spring is holding this little bit. Oh, that I've already undone. Okay. It could have pinged away. So that's what was would click into there when it reaches its like the default horizontal position. Mm, so the whole weight of it was all through that little hinge part. It's a bit wobbly on one of these other cameras. Yeah, I wonder if something snapped off in there. Oh, maybe if this all comes out from one side, perhaps. You have to take off. There's a shock mounting thing there. Yeah, so the front bits come off, but this cable, there's no visible connector. Wondering, that must be an optical interrupter thing for this zoom focus ring. Should just work like an incremental encoder. Oh, that's actually like a rotary encoder on there. So it's geared tooth section down in there down in there where it's hard to see. So that didn't bring any of the lasery things, which was that. And those look like light sensors of some sort. Maybe the laser part is somewhere else, maybe that's in there. It must be that thing or that's another sensor. I don't know, that looks like a laser. I need to try and make that go. Okay, this might come out now. Well, it mostly comes out. But it's attached by various ribbon cables still. Little tiny ribbon cables. Oh, there's the image sensor. Another little ribbon cable there. And then there's another ribbon cable there. And that also has that encoder thing on it. So it goes all the way around to these controls over here. You can see there little solenoid that it will be for opening the the flash pop-up somehow I wonder if that is the bit or IGBT which triggers the, the 
the flash. Where's the trigger transformer though? I'll have to investigate that. You've got this insulating sheet to stand off the flash cables from this like cast body. Just to reduce the capacitance, I guess. Otherwise it will waste some of the energy. Especially on the trigger circuit, which is such high impedance. I'm wondering if that comes out as its own whole module. It might do. Look at that whole flash module. And that unplugs. I want to see what the deal is with that. Okay, so there's the controls on the side. Oh, that's all heat steeped together. Maybe that's just a FET, I don't know, for triggering the flash. That's what I think that is. That it pulls down to ground, to chassis, on that red wire here, which is probably the negative end of the trigger transformer. That's what I think, but there must be more stuff in this though. There must be an IGBT for interrupting the current flow for doing the red eye reduction and lower power flash modes so that it doesn't discharge the entire flash capacitors when you want lower power. It's usually a little IGBT for doing that. This part here where the capacitors are, you have a little transformer there for boosting the voltage up, but I don't think any of the trigger parts are on this. See the mess we made discharging it that way. Yeah, that, could have, that mess, same mess could have been made by your finger if you touched it. Maybe that there is the IGBT that interrupts the flash. It's possible. Get rid of this foam tape stuff. See where the tracks go. Mm, didn't help. No, that might just be a gate drive for the switcher that does the boost converter. Hard to know, we'll take part the rest of it and then we'll work out what's going on. It looks like there's a circuit board in this part. You can see the edge of a circuit board down there that moves when this folds. So I don't think there's any more stuff in the bottom part other than that solenoid. It's probably why there's two cables here. One just goes to the solenoid and probably a switch that tells it where it's up or down. And the other one goes to where the flash is controlled. Oh, there's also that accessory plug, which I don't really know what that was for. Okay, so there's a little hook there which does the ejecting. There might be more screws under this. There's usually a way of getting the middle ring out and then revealing more screws. I don't know, maybe you have to take the housing off this top part and it pulls all out through the other direction. Yeah, there you go, look at that. Oh! Okay, well that red wire then didn't have anything to do with it. That's just the center contact of the hot shoe. So that's, yeah, if the only thing that does is trigger an external flash. And that ribbon cable only goes to that accessory connector. Maybe that's an external microphone? I don't know if this even does video though. Back in the day, it does some sort of video. Okay, so that's just for the trigger of a hot shoe and it's reasonably high voltage they must let you connect fairly high voltage sync flashes on there which is good i guess got one of those old ones that has hundreds of volts on it now is the interesting part we've got where these wires come up and it looks like that must be the igbt which can interrupt the flash also there's a connector at that end as well it's interesting And there's the trigger transformer. Okay, that's the solenoid down there. Which takes those outer two connections. One of them looks like ground because it carries on. Then there's two connections that go up to there. Be one for trigger. And one for... I uh, know there's a switch there as well. A little switch. Trigger and interrupt are probably the same signal. And the other one there is that switch. Which must be for when the flash is up or not. I need a small screwdriver. What we've been using now is zero JIS, so we need a zero zero. Wow, that was a tight one. If we use the wrong screwdriver, it will munt the screw completely and immediately. I'm gonna pull this through. 
Start it getting tangled on everything. So we don't actually have to pull through that high voltage cable because it can unplug, but there you go, pull through anyway. What an interesting little assembly this is with the housing of the flash tube also working as boss bar holders. This is the trigger transformer with that strip which goes up and connects to the reflector triggering the flash and then on the outside are the two electrodes from the flash tube and then there's a little circuit there oh that's got to connect as well so that can disconnect so there's a trigger transformer and that's probably the capacitor for it so that will get charged up to the flash voltage and then when you trigger the flash there must be a little transistory thing somewhere so you can use that one when you trigger the flash then it will discharge the capacitor through the trigger transformer which will create a, create a pretty high voltage pulse on that point there which will ionize the gas triggering the discharge and the bright light and then usually or presumably that's an IGBT which gets turned on at the same time the flash gets triggered and then gets turned off when the flash needs to terminate looks like the, this side here goes straight through to that connector this side, the one closest to the edge of the board goes down those wires from there from the outside of the connector to there which is where the IGBT is and then the other side of the flash tube goes to that middle group is under there somehow I might have to pull it apart further to properly trace that out unless it's not even an IGBT and I'm just making stuff up there's a possibility of that. Could be that. Take a bit of working out. I will think about that and we might have a look at this later on in more detail once I've worked out the circuit or found a service manual. Always interested in flash equipment. In the meantime, let's take a look in this part here. Look at all that stuff. Even a little blue removable thingy. Must cover up something. Some kind of adjustment screw by the look of it. So there's some motors there. You'll have zoom, focus, and iris. Already messed the end of that up. Putting it on the bench. That's those things, whatever those are. Some sort of light sensors. And then there's some kind of laser device there. Which I think goes to its own little board and then plugs in there. We've got the tripod mounting thing. We'll get rid of that first. And then that's on a shock mount, so it must decouple the movement of the tripod from the camera, just to stop shocking the camera, I guess. And there's this whole board with various chips on it, and this long ribbon cable assembly to go to the other side. Let's remove those cables. And then the image sensor is there on the back. So that's the bit that's gone dud in this camera. And that ribbon cable goes off to all of the lens assembly stuff. This is taped down. Ah, there's another motor. Oh, yeah, we saw that. Three motors with some optical interrupters, sensor things. And you can see there's a rack on that one. And more optical sensors. Oh, more stuff on the back. So there's another connector there that's for going to the sensor board flipping up type. I wonder if the CCD comes off of this or it is again like other cameras we looked in it's stuck behind a heatsink part and can't be removed. Let's see. Oh, it looks like this one comes off. It's because this isn't primarily video they don't have to worry about heat sinking so much since it only has short bursts of intense operation. Yeah pretty neat image sensor. Perhaps we should look at that close up. I guess we should take this apart fully we might as well. So that's the lasery thing there. It goes and it's got it looks like some diodes maybe and a resistor. And then that just connects onto there. And it looks like it's just taped down to this rack part for a motor. Or zoom zoom presumably. And I assume that one would be focus. So it's some kind of diffusing thing on the end of it. All this stuff's all stuck together and it's all just going to have to come out in one bit unless we're going to rip the ribbon cables. Some kind of rack, presumably focus. Yeah, that just all pulls out. 
Little photo interrupted thing. Another rack. Presumably zoom. And that one there, which is presumably the iris or aperture. That might not come out. Depends what it what's in there. I might have to wait until other bits come off. And there's another connected there. Maybe that's an ND filter selector or shuttery thing of some sort. And he has two wires, so it, that's more of a, ch a state change than a proportional device. So it might be an indoor, an, yeah, indoor, outdoor, or ND filter type thing. Let's take off some of these screws and see what happens. Ah, now we've done it. That must be focus, I assume. You can see the aperture blades in there. Yeah, but since we've taken this back off now, the shafts are exposed there. Okay, so the zoom part... It's just that. So the zoom must work with the focus with separate motors so they're not coupled. So they must work together to do the zoom so that as the zoom is happening the focus is compensated for by this. I don't know what the correct words for that operation is. And you can see the aperture blades operation there. But there's another thing that doesn't blow away in the wind. I don't know, there is another something in there. There's this, this little thing which might be some sort of motor. Ah, the shutter. Is that what that is or is that this part here? Maybe that's the shutter. Forgot about that because it's a camera. It's an actual camera for taking pictures, not a video camera. So it's got a shutter of some sort. It's a very rigid assembly. Uh, we need to separate it with these screws here. The two halves off. Okay, so it's just a lens. Then we got the aperture thing, but that's gonna completely just fall apart when we take it off. I think is that true? At least it's just held on by that. Well, it's just another lens, okay. So I don't know what that is. Quite a few blades on it. You can see where that actuates. There's another little thing there. Oh. oh, okay, so that is the the shutter. Maybe that's only one of the curtains. Yeah, you can see it there. It's just a, like, what's that, a leaf shutter. That's what that is, so that triggers that. There you go, shuts it off. So I reckon there's another one of those in that other bit, which we now lost this part here. I think there will be another one of those in here with a bigger motor or solenoid. That's what I reckon. So there's two of them. The first first one starts off all blank and then one opens and the exposure is started and then the other one closes and the exposure is finished. Yeah, see, that's a special solenoid thing that can change state very precisely. So I reckon in there, there's another shutter. No! Uh, it's just... it looks like it's an IR filter. Ah, oh, I see what's going on now. This is the night vision. So that removes the IR filter for night vision. So maybe those things on the front of the lens, wherever they went, there's two little doofies there and there. Perhaps those are IR LEDs to make the night vision work. Yeah, these things here. I reckon those are. I reckon those are infrared LEDs. They look like they're down firing with a reflector in the back, so they get a nice focused beam. I think those are IR LEDs, and then when you put it in that night mode, this thing actuates. And it winds the IR filter out of the way for allowing the IR light to go through for night vision mode. And then when you put it into normal mode, it will put it back so that the colors come out proper in the daylight. Okay, so that means this other little thingy that we looked at 
little shutter thing. One on here, that's that's opening and closing to do the exposure. It's not done with two separate devices. So there's a little cog there that winds around somehow and it's just somehow triggered by that thing. How can that just flipping from one state to another drive that whole thing across? Anyway, it does. It's got a removable IR filter. Final part to take apart is the other part of the lens. You're not going to see much in here other than a... Hang on a minute. Just, just found this. Which will be how that that IR filter thing works. So this little solenoid thing, which is like a very short amount of turn, will have that on its spindle. So it turns like that. And then that that flicking from side to side gets amplified in here. So that it can wind at the whole distance by just flicking from side to side, like that. So it can go the whole distance, quarter turn, to a half turn, or whatever it is, some ratio like that. So that can drag the whole filter across. Anyway, let's take apart this. And then there's one bit that can get moved as part of the zoom operation. I think there's just a shield there that also holds the rods and nothing else. Some sort of adjustments there. I'm not exactly sure what they do. They might be might have been controlling the length of how far in the screws can go, or squeezing it out to adjust the positioning of that lens. I think as you screw that in, it will lift it up. Oh yes, sir. that took out the rods. Silver steel rods or something like that that this lens would ride on and there's the little bit where it attaches to the shaft the threaded shaft for moving in and out so that's that that's just a housing now okay we'll clean up this mess and then we'll take a look at some of the circuit parts here is how the shutter button works there are two buttons on top of each other and they will have different amounts of force to activate them so you end up with the half press for focus and then full press for shutter release it seems to be a camera where you don't feel the first press but that's how they do it, it's two buttons stacked on top of each other there's that rotary control for adjusting things and pressing for selecting weirdly the specifications for the lens are in that European format where they use commas instead of dots which is quite strange and makes things difficult to understand but so it'll be f2 to 2.4 and 9.7 to 48.5 millimeters so fairly bright lens fast lens but then the image sensor is not that big so yeah it's got some protected glass thing on the top okay we'll have a look at that close up in a second Look how many screws that come out of this thing. That's quite a lot. Also made quite a mess. Uh, we're going to take apart the viewfinder now. Let's see what that's all about. Presumably it'd just be a tiny little LCD. Not sure if it's colour even. I didn't actually... Did we look at it here? We did look at that. Yes, it is a colour viewfinder. So it'll be a little LCD. Unclips. Okay, so there will be a, the backlight be on this board at the back and then that will be a cable going to the LCD part and look at that, it's a little single LED backlight little diffusery thing around it a little gasket thing it's one LED, I think that's just solder blobs there that don't go to anything and, yeah, and that was the diffuser isn't it? between the screen and there it is that's the little LCD panel it's got its own connector and 
not sure if that... Oh yeah, there's another surround thing. There are some screws to take out here. Is that a polarizer? Could be, yep. Yep, so that is... That thing there is a polarizing filter for the LCD. That's interesting. Interesting that it wouldn't be part of the LCD panel itself. And then there's some lens. And there's an, oh yeah, that one there. What, yeah, that one moves. So that lens moves for that um, eye adjustment thing. And this must be just pushed back in there. That's the springiness of the ribbon cable that's preventing it from coming out easily. Oh, there's another surround thing. Okay. Okay, a little tiny LCD. That's the back side of it, which looks like it's got a polarizer stuck on it. And the front side, yeah, it still looks like it's got another polarizer on it. That's a Sony with that part number there. Small LCD panel. Very interesting. Okay, let's look at some things up close. I don't know what that purpley thing is in the corner. It just does that, so... Yeah, it's not my choice. Now it's green. So we're looking at the... Uh, the LCD. It's probably possible to go even closer to it. Let's try that. How far we can go in. Okay, I think that's as zoomed in as we can get. But now... We can see right onto the the edge of the screen there. Look, it says it's an electrostatic sensitive device. That's good. And we can see the connections there. Ah, oh, look at that. They even tell you the, the pinout of the LCD. That's quite amazing. And then those connections go in and there's conductive strips on the glass. And we can see the corner of the polarizer there. If we look at it from the other side, does that give us anything more interesting? And you can see the connections there. Interesting. So there must be some line or column driver things on the edge of the glass. Is that what those bits are down the edge? Yeah, like in the center of the screen are we looking at the either the row or column drivers maybe stuff on different layers there and that's the edge of my finger now and is there is there other drivers down this side then yeah there's something in there so that's interesting okay let's have a look at the image sensor I don't think we'll be able to get to pixel level on this. Just seeing what we can do with the light. It's a shame it's so bumpy. We might be at the sort of maximum zoomness there where the lens goes a bit soft. Okay, let's have a look at the image sensor. Isn't really that much to see, is there? It's got a die, and then there's bond wires there joining onto it. And not a huge number of them. Some square things. There's also some sort of zigzag pads there. I think we could get a some sort of glimpse at the pixels. But I don't think that's going to be possible. Okay, well that's the image sensor. Let's try. Can we look at those infrared light things? The problem is they're stuck on a metal bracket, unfortunately. The other stuff is various ICs, which we can zoom out quite a lot for that. That's a connector. That's the one I think was the power supply. With all its bits, capacitors, inductors. The collection of inductors there. And then there's a thing that we thought was a CPU of some sort with its crystal there. That's 32.768 kilohertz. Seems like a clock type thing. And then there's this little tiny one there. 
it just seems to say XOL maybe? And you can see there's a guard trace around it. There's also a little solder ball there on the side. But yeah, you can see a guard trace, it just ends there and there and over there to shield the lines coming off of the, the crystal and then it's got this parallel presumably capacitor there to load it and then it goes into two pins that are next to each other and maybe that's related since that also, also includes that guard trace another little oscillator 30 megahertz probably you see the top looks like it's been welded shut look at that that's quite neat and very small there is a service manual for this camera, so let's explore that for a while. See if we can find something interesting. It talks about laser unit. There's specifications. How to deal with flex cables. The... Ah, look at that. How to safely discharge the flash. They recommend a 1K resistor. Poke it in that hole, which is the hole where we measured it. The laser unit can be electrostatically damaged. Ah, self-diagnosis. So we might be able to see what that error was we were getting before. Taking it apart. Is that some adjustment device? Dismantling procedure. Uh, we managed without that. Block diagrams. Let me show you the boards, lens, shutter. We got IR filter motor, focus motor, zoom motor, IR LEDs. So they were LEDs there. There's a laser unit. There's a laser diode controller driver. I wonder where that is. A CCD imager, a sensor, and there's a timing generator. Sample and hold, automatic gain control, analog to digital converter, and then a camera DSP, RAM, USB interface with a 30 megahertz ROM. Then there's LCD, the viewfinder, the LCD panel with backlights, AB output. Ah, yes, a ACC. So that's a link signal and an external standby is it standby on so that can be re that's a remote control standard lank lanc which is can be used for controlling vcrs for doing editing power circuit there we go look at that flash charge detector dc 300 volts okay so that transistor that was on that board no designators on here, it's a bit annoying. The up transistor that was on that board is for driving the transformer that is next to it to charge the capacitors and there's a dual diode package which might be that little thing in there. And then that goes to page 310 so we'll get to that soon. More drivers for motors. Now where did that flash bit go to? Oh it just goes through to that. Flash unit, flexible board, 4.9 volts. The different flexes, fly, flex, flexes. Like a testing thing, a pattern box. That's interesting. CCD imager, video amplifier, audio, all handled by one chip. Front control, uh, LCD, and EFVs, LCD driver, DC in strobe charge. Okay, so here's the high voltage cable where that connects into this here. So we're looking at this circuit for this board at the moment. So there's the two flash capacitors, the diode, the flyback transformer for charging it and 
various transistors there. The charge switch, which will control that, turn that on, and then it will be a self oscillating circuit. So that's good. So it's pretty self contained, and that comes directly off of the battery voltage through there if it's running off battery or through there if it's running off the DC input and we've got this thing for sensing it full charge ah okay so that there will steal the base drive to ground when the full charge is reached which is determined by that looks some sort of zener I must be making a voltage divider on that plus the internal resistances and base voltage and uh, one microfarad filter on that interesting flash charge detector where do we look up these devices and uh, we'll look for the rest of the circuit first control switch audio video the laser the flash unit okay so this is the connections we've got some sort of power supply 5 volts pop up button strobe on which must be the trigger signal and then some grounds where is where is the flash board then i want to look at this thing flash unit i don't know what one of these it is near that if p847 that doesn't match up with any of that stuff oh nice drawings of everything Parts list. Ah, where were this? Where are the schematics then? So we don't get any drawing of the a schematic of the actual flash part. Or did I miss it? It doesn't seem to be any more details than that for the flash. That's a bit disappointing if that's the case. Hmm. Okay, maybe we don't get to see exactly how this thing works then. It's a little bit disappointing. Might have to take it apart to determine it myself. Flash unit, that's the only information they give you. The charging part. Oh well, I'll get back to you if I find any more information about the flash. Otherwise, that's going to be it for now.